What's up guys, this is Cody, back again with a how-to. Uh, this video, we're going to talk about how to hit bigger drops. And I'm talking about anything above 5, 10, 15, 20 plus feet drops, road gaps, steep drops, uh, that next level. Stuff that you don't see on regular cross-country trails. Alright guys, so let's get started. I have some notes and we'll talk about how to hit drops. As you've seen in clips before, uh, those are some pretty decent sized drops and uh, I'm going to give you tips about how to hit them. Alright, first off, I'm going to get my notes, handy dandy notes right here. Okay, flat drops. Okay, flat drops. We're talking about your road gaps, your wood drop gaps. Uh, anything that has a flat surface, it could be natural, could be wood, could be anything, could be a container. How do you hit those type of drops? Well, my biggest tips, well first off, before we even go into flat drops, what do you need to know and what type of uh, skill do you have to have to hit big drops? One, first off, I'm hoping that if you're watching this video and you want to know how to hit bigger drops, you have practice on one foot drops, two foot drops, three foot drops, etc. and are really confident with the technique of dropping and you, you have some previous experience before you go hit a really big drop. Uh, two, whenever you hit a drop for the first time, especially if it's bigger, have a friend that has hit it before and just follow them in. Just ask, or even ask a local person who's there if you're at a bike park, hey man, can I come and just follow you into this drop? 99% of the time, they're going to say, sure, no problem. Uh, and the next thing is, is uh, make that transition from smaller drops to bigger drops uh, slow. I mean, there are a lot of places around here in the United States or wherever you're from that has tons of trails these days. Mountain biking is huge, so I would just drive around and just build up. And if not, just build your own local drops if you can, especially if you have property. Alright, so back to flat drops. Um, biggest thing is one, my favorite thing to do on flat drops is just keep my hips neutral. And I have a little diagram right here, total engineer move, as you can see. Um, if the green is your direction of the speed, uh, the box is yourself, and the orange is your weight and trajectory, whenever you're going off a flat drop, I like to keep my weight centered. Centered to a little bit back. And I won't explain why. So when I, when I mean by you're centering your weight, I'm talking about your hips. You want to keep your hips in the center of your bike to a little bit, just a hair bit behind maybe the seat. Um, I believe that doing this on flat drops is helpful because if you, normally on flat drops like big road gaps, uh, it's all about speed. It's just about speed, staying loose in the bike, and not locking up midair and having that frontward uh, momentum. If you have neutral to a little bit rear, rear and you stay loose, you're going to be sailing and you're not going to have an issue. I like staying neutral for another reason is if you do start going a little bit forward and you start having that, that forward spin, you can have the extra room to push your bike forward and save yourself. If you're already way back and you start dead sailoring forward, you have no shot, especially on flat drops with all the speed you're going to have. Um, and just that, that is the key. That is key. Flat drops are the easiest flat drops when you go big. Mostly it's about commitment. Commitment, speed, and just having confidence. Okay, so now let's go to the more technical steep drops. Now my other diagram right here. Steep drops are more like your technical drops you find on the cross country trail. You want your weight further back. I mean, I'm talking about your hips behind your seat, buzzing your tire if, 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 if it's that steep. You really need to have it that far back. Um, big thing is, is making sure that you're also staying loose and the one thing I find with steep drops where most people have crashes is that they actually overshoot steep drops. And once again, have a friend, have a buddy who's hit it before. And if you are the first person to hit it, um, you're going to be surprised. Steeper drops that are big don't need that much speed. Okay, They don't need as much speed and it's more technical in terms of getting that weight position correctly. So now the big question is, alright, we talk about flat drops, steep drops. What do you do if you case? What do you do if you're flying 15, 20 feet and 
you, it looks like you're about to case. Well, one, first off, you want to stay loose. Because if you do case, you want to be able to uh, absorb everything. You want to be the next form of suspension, and you want to be able to be as loose as possible so you don't get blown off the side of your bike. Okay, stay loose, and if you can, uh, go into a neutral position. And the reason why I would say get into a neutral position while you're about to case is because you need to be able to adjust yourself as fast as you can. And if you're buzzing the back tire and you case, you're going OTB, you're going off the side, and you're probably going to get hurt. Try to neutral yourself off so you can be reactive to whatever's going to happen. Um, two, uh, just don't panic. Don't panic because if you start panicking right when you know you're about to case, you will lock up and you're going to go stone cold and you're going to hit and you're just going to blow your hands off and it's not going to be fun. It's not going to be fun either way, but it's definitely not going to be fun if you're hard as a rock. Well, lastly, alright, so let's say you're about to case, but you feel like inside your gut that you know you can make it. The last tip and recommendation I have is to suck your knees into your chest and bring the bike up between your knees as high as you can. You'll be surprised that sometimes when you have a hair bit doubt of panicking and you think you're in a case, just sucking those knees up as high as you can into your chest will save you from having a small case. Alright guys, um, I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, once you know how to drop, uh, you can go out, enjoy it with your friends, and hit the trails, and hit some big drops. I'm assuming that if you are hitting drops, or if you are watching this video and you're hitting bigger drops, you know how to manual. If not, check back, uh, check back with the channel, and I'll make a how-to manual video very soon. All these videos require you to manual off the uh, lip of the drop, and I'm just assuming immediately that if you're watching this video, you know how to, but like I said, I will make a video for everyone else who wants to know how to manual. Alright guys, thank you very much. I hope you all enjoy. Like and subscribe and enjoy the rest of the video. Peace.